It's time for this week's Uplift. Three ordinary guys that want you to find the freedom that is available by knowing our Lord Jesus Christ. So sit back and enjoy Uplift, brought to you by the Fulcrum Center. Visit our site at thefulcrumcenter.org. Well, hey guys, this is our last, last uh, meeting of the year for 2022. It's hard. To, I, I can't believe it. I know. This year went fast. It did. I seriously just got used to writing 2022 instead of 2021. And now I got to <laughs> switch again. I I, I can't win. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe how fast it's gone either. Yeah, it really has. Mm-hmm. It has. Um, and I don't know if it's because we're getting older or you know, obviously time is time and it doesn't change. But man, it just seems like it goes faster as you get older. I don't know why. I think yeah. we just get busier and busier. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's probably true. It has mm. been a busy year. A lot of change this year. A yes. lot of good change. It has a been a lot of change. Coming. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah I think it, it a lot been. of yeah, I think a lot of people learning and growing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, Chad, I think you're right. And it seems like that 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 is just adding to uh, the acceleration of, of how things how things are moving because you know there's there's an excitement in the learning um, but in that excitement too there's <clears throat> opportunities to put those things into practice you know and so mm-hmm. it's constant you know you're learning something you're going to putting it into practice and and stuff and so you know and then it just goes and goes yep definitely yep. So we are remote tonight um, for a couple of reasons. Yeah. You know, we um, we are recording this before Christmas, actually. But um, one, there's this big storm supposedly coming. And two, you know, we got other things going on uh, during the weeks. And we just thought, yeah, let's just take a break and record remotely. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, mm-hmm. I can see if there's a lot of snow this winter we might be doing this a lot more often yeah that's true that's true and it's okay you know chad was just talking about you know it's just we get busier and it's okay yeah. to slow yeah. down and just kind of take a break and do things a little bit different at the same time you know maybe there's going to be a couple storms coming through and we're going to have to do this so let's go ahead and get some practice in mm-hmm. right yeah and for those listening on the podcast they won't know any difference but uh for those who are watching on youtube yeah you see a you see a difference for sure. Well, I'm Phil Bliss. I'm Ian Thornton. I'm Jab McLeish. And this is Uplift. And welcome, everyone. Yeah. We're glad you're here. So, what do you guys anticipate coming in the new year? Any thoughts? I'm looking at Ian because I know he's charged up to give us an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I tell you, it's the, the new year. Oh, my gracious. There's so many things that that I know that um, the Lord's been sharing with me on on what's coming in in 23. Um, as a matter of fact, I've been writing uh, several notes down, um, and I, I guess more anticipating to really get into the the weeds of things or you know the meat of it all um, for the you know our first time in 23 being together to to share some of those things. But yeah. I know that just in preparation, the 23, um, what I'm seeing and understanding, um, for my personal life. Um, Mm -hmm. but then also I I know for a lot of people that I'm connected with and connected to and things that I can share is that the Lord is really looking to dive deeper into our hearts and, um, person of, of who we are, um, revealing things to us that have been, um, at points, uh, if I can say like prisons that we have been in, whether it's emotionally or mentally or spiritually, that he really wants to lead us out of. Um, mm. So the last couple months, and Phil, I, I've had a chance to share with th- this with you on a more detailed basis. Um, <clears throat> but the Lord's just really had me study Exodus and mm-hmm. just reading it over and over again. And um, you know, even pulling out and outlining um, all that took place with uh, Moses and Pharaoh and 
you know, all of the plagues and the reactions and responses of the children of Israel, just all of this and just kind of just pouring over this over and over again. And, and God just really getting to the point of going, Ian, look, this is you, this, you know, the children of Israel are in this place of, of um, imprisonment, um, but they've become comfortable there and, and dependent upon those who held them captive and found a life that's um, that they could function in. And um, it's not about that. It's not about living in a life where they can function. And it's not a life where I can just function, but there's freedom that, that God has for me. That's, that's well beyond what I see and that he wants to take me out of that. And sometimes it's um, that battle of watching the plagues come through and going, oh, I thought God was supposed to deliver me from this. What are all these frogs doing around here? Or I thought I was supposed to be delivered from this, but you know, what, what are these gnats? What are they, you know, and you know, why is the, why is the water that I, I'm supposed to drink from turned to blood? I mean, you know, why, what am I dealing with, with all this stuff when I'm supposed to, I, I thought this was supposed to be freedom, but the whole time it's like, you know, God is really preparing to bring me out of where I'm at. And, and it's those things that, um, he is making me feel uncomfortable in my comfort to be able to trust him that there is something greater on the outside of that and that he wants to take me there. And it may not be the path that I thought. And that's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And it's okay no. to walk that path. That is but that's what I'm saying. Part is what I'm seeing, you know, it's just in this, in this one, at this one point, um, is, is freedom. There, there is more freedom mm -hmm. that God wants to bring his children into, um, and get out of their comfort zones and into more freedom that he has for them to be able to, to create the impact that he designed them to create. You know, it, I'm, I'm nodding because as I said, this is, we're recording this before Christmas. And as I was preparing for Christmas Eve, um, God was very clear. Talk about change because mm. change is coming and prepare people for it, have them look for it, have them see it when it comes. Yes. And, and, you know, that's something that, and it ties into Christmas a little bit because people didn't know that Jesus was born. Hey, did you hear about the kid that was born in the manger? Oh yeah. I heard about that. You know, <laughs> right. Talking around right. the water cooler or something, but didn't realize that the change had come. So, you know, people need to be ready and seek God out and say, what, what's my change? What's coming for me in the new right. year? Or you mm -hmm. might miss it. I, t I totally agree. I, I do see that, that that is such a huge thing and it's a setup for even further. Um, you know, and I, I know we're talking about 23, but um, you know, I'm seeing in 24, um, that the changes that we step into in 23 and those things that we allow the Lord to remove hmm. from us and that we allow ourselves to step out of those prison cells, you know, and step out into the new, um, that 23 really sets the stage for us to, to run and move and be positioned in 24 than further, further than we would ever imagine. <clears throat> so really yeah. building upon itself, but, but 23 is, is a year of, of focus and, um, and I know we've used this, this word and, um, I, I, I think even as the days pass, it's in my heart is more and more true, but that it's a time of, of pain that's, mm. that's coming because it, it's sometimes change isn't always easy. And sometimes it is painful, um, surgeries, you know, we've even used that as an example in the past before you go in for a, pro a procedure or a surgery that, you know, there's some cuts that need to be made and they're painful. But after that, the healing and all that's taken place from that is, is greatly beneficial. And, and I see that as part of our process in, in 23, that there's some things that God is going to lovingly and, and carefully remove, but it can, it could be at points, it could be painful for us, but he's there. You know, he is the physician, so he'll walk us through it. 
but um, there's some difficulties that, that we may be facing in 23, <clears throat> but it's setting us up for what he has for us in the future because it's good. He's a good father and it's good mm-hmm. and it's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the one thing that, that keeps coming to my mind is just, we're going to learn in 2023 to do what we're supposed to do as Christians. And we're going to learn about authorities. We're going to learn about the things that we're, that we've been supposed to be doing for 2000 years that we haven't done Mm -hmm. in in a lot of cases. And and we're going to move and, and from being cute Christians to being real Christians in, in, in the future. Yeah. And, and Chad, just along, you know, along those same lines and just to kind of bring these two things together from my perspective is, you know, I, I remember those times and still do. I still, you know, remember those times when the Lord's wanted me to move in, a, in the authority that he's given me. But you know what? I don't want to offend anybody and I don't want to speak up in the crowd or to a person and share what the Lord's put on my heart to share with them because it's a little overbearing or it may sound controlling or it may, whatever, whatever the reason. So it was uncomfortable for me to step into a situation and speak into those things. And that's uncomfortable. But does, is that what God wanted for me? Absolutely. So at points, was it painful? Yeah. Have I seen the positives of it? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So it's those type of things, the change that we're facing or my own personal prison cell of keeping my, my, my words to myself or my voice to myself or not wanting to offend anybody. Those type of things is what God had to pull me out of to speak truth into the lives of those around to allow me to step further into who he wants me to be, but to move in that authority that he's given me. But there was a process of quote unquote pain, so to say that I've, I had to walk through of getting rid of some of my old to go into the new. You know, one of the, one thing that the enemy throws at us that is so hidden, so subtle, so overlooked is fear. And fear can keep us from, it can paralyze us. Yeah. And, you know, I think I was thinking about what you said, Ian, and I remember how I knew God was telling me to do things, but I walked in fear and it kept me back and I kept justifying it. But then when I said I couldn't take it anymore, if you will, and like God just wouldn't stop getting on me about do this, do this. He wanted to show me. And when I did it, I didn't walk in fear in that moment. And I did it. And I see the results. I'm like, oh, 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 I'm not going to walk in fear anymore. And freedom, incredible mm-hmm. freedom. And, and I know I'm being very general here, but um, one of the things is, you know, God told me, pray for these people's healing. And like, ah, yeah, okay, well, I, just a quick prayer, you know, like not really expecting, even doubt was in there, the healing wasn't going to take place. And I'm certainly not going to tell them that I prayed for them to be healed. But yet they're telling me, you know, doctors made a mistake. I'm not, I don't have cancer. I don't have this mass. I don't have this aneurysm. I don't have, and I'm like, oh, so that's what God was showing me. Like, I told you to do this. And I wanted, mm-hmm. he wanted me to tell them too and pray with them. But he was showing yeah. me, I'm moving when you, and I'm wanting you to move. Mm-hmm. And when, so I, now that I'm stepping away from that fear, just if you're watching this, I may come up to you and pray for your healing because I believe God's going to heal. Mm. I think that's too. one of those. Yeah, Absolutely. And it's one of those things, too, about, you know, to be able to talk about this subject tonight and um, how God has used uplift over the time that we've been doing this is that we're really going to walk through these things and be, you know, we've always been vulnerable and open. And I, I understand that that's part of what uplift is, is, you know, it's it's always been encouraging for me to hear somebody be very vulnerable and just kind of put it out there. 
Um, and as we walk through 23, I, I know that the, we'll do that. You know, there's, there's things that God is going to be dealing with us personally. And just what we're talking about, to put that out in front of people and, and to share with how God's working and walking us through it. And, and people, you know, it's encouraging. It's, you know, it's, to me, it's always been encouraging to hear somebody's testimony of, mm -hmm. of how God's using them and working with them. Um, so over the year, the coming year, we're going to, we're, we'll talk about it. We'll get to watch it. These things come to pass and, and people will be able to relate to it mm -hmm. and, uh, and it'll encourage them. It'll be uplifting to them and us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So casting out that fear, walking away from that fear is, mm -hmm. is kind of like walking out of that prison cell that you're talking about. Yeah, Absolutely. You know, yes, and that's that's a big thing because that Phil that ties right into what Chad was talking about earlier, yeah. is to move in our authority and yeah. to and to move out of that quote unquote cute Christian what Chad said yeah. and move yeah. into the to being the Christian that God has created and designed us to be. I mean, you know, read the Book of Acts, and you see you you see the the expectation of what God had and Christ had towards the disciples. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he left and gave them the Holy spirit to go do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I, I was telling somebody, I can't remember who I was talking to now. I said, just read John chapter 14 through 16. Just do that for me. Okay. Because I knew that this person, God would be speaking to this person through those three chapters. Actually, I think I said it in church. Didn't I? Chad? You I did. I did. You yeah, did. I, I, knew was, I was listening. Okay, I, I knew I said it at some point, I couldn't remember when, but just read John chapter 14 through 16, and even 17, go all the way to the end, <laughs> and start on Acts, but anyway, it just, you see how they were so afraid, so not understanding, they had walked with Jesus for three years, and and I think it was Thomas says, show us the way, or maybe it was Philip said, show us the way, and we'll go with you, he's like, Jesus is like, come on, man. <laughs> I've showed you the way, you mm -hmm. know, but, and I'm not trying to say that people, I'm not trying to put people down, but what I'm saying is, right. God has given us the way. Now we need to right. walk in it. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did in the book of Acts. They actually then yeah. walked in it and in that freedom and what a difference they made. Right. And that's for yeah, was, all of us. It's not just for the 12 apostles. It's not just for us. It's for everybody. Exactly. That in just where Jesus says, go into all the world. Yeah. You know, and it was um, reading through Luke four and um, Christ going out into the wilderness in you know, 40 days with, with the devil and, and going through the temptations and all. And in the first part of Luke four talks about Jesus going into the wilderness full of the spirit mm -hmm. and which, which is where we are, right. Mm -hmm. You know, the Holy spirit lives in us. And, and so we have the fullness of the spirit in us. And so then, you know, in Luke 4, Jesus goes through all of the temptations with the enemy and with and, and then he comes, it says um, towards the end of uh, or the middle of, of Luke 4, that Jesus came out of the wilderness in the power of the spirit. He mm -hmm. went into the wilderness in the fullness and came out in the power and in him coming out in the power is when we see the the miracles take place and, mm -hmm. and his ministry just just takes off, you know, and, and that's so much of where I, I see the church being positioned is, you know, we've been given the Holy spirit and, and we're going to go through some times of testing, which could very well be kind of what we're discussing in 23 mm -hmm. and then to move forward in the power. And so there's these moments in time that God is going to bring across our paths to step away from the fear, the prison cell of being afraid, and to step into the doing and the exercising of the power of the spirit that resides within us. Mm. So what are we going to do? What's your answer? And that's where I look at myself and I go, I, I need to make that decision now because in the moment, I'll probably fold like a lawn chair. <laughs> so I, I need to go, okay, I need to make this decision right now. So that I have a point of reference to go back to, I've already told the Lord, I say, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to step into it. And so um, that's just looking forward to those opportunities to step into what God has 
and really to um, put him on display. Hmm. I'm looking forward to it. You know, I've been reading the Bible and God has pointed out something very specific. And I mean, when it comes across, it's like on a billboard. It's that big. He's pointing it out. Okay. And that is, and the spirit of God came upon him or her. And in that moment, these people do things. And I think the reason that it's so important right now is when early on, when I wasn't going to church and I was, you know, first started going to church, the church that I went to, they taught that, well, the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. And it was almost like the Holy Spirit didn't exist until Pentecost is almost what they were teaching. And since that was the first thing I heard, I, I believed it. And now he's showing me, oh, no. I mean, I knew that the Holy Spirit let us create man in our image. You know, I knew he was there at the creation, but he's showing me where I have put my spirit upon David, Joab, um, right. Moses, Joshua, Caleb, mm -hmm. all these people that they, the spirit came upon them, Boaz. And so it's not like... It's something brand new, but the thing is that is new that Jesus promised that it would be coming for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, God put it upon people in the past and they did incredible things. But like you said, Chad, we have this authority right now because he's given it to us. Mm -hmm. We all carry it yep. inside us if we are believers yep. and we need to use it. Yeah. And I'll tell you what we need to do too. And we need to, we can start this now that we, we can start practicing now for 2023, but we can start speaking and sowing seeds and decreeing and declaring good things in ourselves and our families, in our lives and in our world. We can start to speak life. We can start mm -hmm. speaking healing. We can start speaking, um, you know, uh, that we're going to have the provisions that we need growth in ministry, success in ministry. Uh, you know, we're going to save lives. We're going to do all these things and we can start speaking that and sow seeds into it to reap from it. Yeah. You know, that's what reap we what need to do. And, and we need to move forward in positivity with that. We, we need to have a, we, we need to do that. It, that's part of the authority that we have, you know, it's, a, it's written yeah. in the, in the Bible, you know, cast out demons to lay hands on people and, and, and those sorts of things. But we can also start speaking and declaring, you know, life and, and, and praying for, for life and, and that sort of thing and healing over, over ourselves and our family. That's where we need to go. That's the, that's the uplift. That's the positive for 23 for me. And also we need to learn, uh, you know, one thing that God's been repeatedly telling me is, don't keep praying for something I've already given you. Mm -hmm. You know, I've, I read that the other day and it's so powerful. God's like, I've already given you all these things. Don't keep praying for them. I've given them to you already. You know, sometimes we have to actually rebuke the enemy. And, and God's been very powerful with me with that too. It's like, you know, hey man, I've already given you this authority. Rebuke your enemy. You know, you have that authority. Yeah. And, and for me, that's what a lot of the new in 2023 is, is to learn and start doing those things and getting out of the religion. What's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Religious, re religiosity. Is yeah, that, there you go. Yes. Religiosity. Yeah. That, that was, yeah, there you go. I stole that from Ian. Yeah. <laughs> but to, to break ourselves out of that, these religious yes. practices and start yeah and just start being real yes. and just start being real with, with, with God and, and with our relationship with God and being real with our enemy who's trying to steal, kill and destroy. And let's be real with him too. And put him yes. in his place. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I had a conversation. Yes, man, Chad, that's dead on. And, and it speaks so much to that prison that I was talking about earlier mm -hmm. to, to step out of that old, <clears throat> and into the new. And so I had a conversation earlier um, this week about uh, with, with a person that they were talking about um, some of their struggles. And they said, well, I have anxiety. I said, well, how does that fit with you having authority? 
And it was just like, you could see the gears grind Mm -hmm. because of something having authority and all the power that goes with that. Mm -hmm. And then somebody said, well, I have anxiety. Okay. Well, that, you know, even that person saying that you could see that it was like a warm, fuzzy blanket because they have spoken those words so much Mm -hmm. that it was a natural place for them to be. And they were comfortable in that place. Yeah. And then to come at it, I mean, we've all experienced it, right? Mm -hmm. But then to go, okay, so how does that fit with your authority? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, this is something that's totally new. But even when you say that, you feel in your heart and in your spirit, you feel the power in that. And and they cannot coincide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those two things cannot coincide. And so as we, what we need is, is for us and, and those around us and to encourage those around us to speak about the authority and the power and the freedom that, that we have so much that it becomes the warm, fuzzy blanket to go to mm-hmm. rather than the other of, well, I'm really depressed today, or I'm just, I have this anxiety or, or whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so it's really just a shifting that that's what we're saying to that place of the comfort of when I speak of my authority, I'm comfortable speaking of my authority. I'm comfortable speaking my joy. I'm comfortable of stepping into my peace and my loving kindness Mm -hmm. and and, and, and I am a patient person. Well, that'll shake your snow globe here at Christmas, <laughs> but, but it's true. We are those people. We've been given those things. Yeah. You know, um, go ahead, Chad. No, I was going to say, I was just going to quickly add back to your point earlier, Ian, of what you said that, you know, there's a, there's, you know, sometimes you go, you go through a surgery and that's painful. And then there's a healing process. So as you do these things and you step through these things, you're going to experience pains of, you know, and they're temporary, you know, you're going to experience physical, mental, uh, emotional pain as you give things up that aren't good for you. And Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're rebuking an enemy who doesn't want to be rebuked. And there's going to be some pain associated with it. But, you know, one thing my dad always said, he said, temp- a temporary uh, inconvenience for a permanent solution. Anytime anybody was anxious about going through a situation and, you know, once you know what lies on the other side, it's like, okay, this is temporary. You're going to go through temporary inconvenience, a temporary pain for a permanent solution. Right. And so we've That's all good. been, yeah, we've all walked through these things and, you know, um, giving up things that aren't good for you. I've, I, I've faced head on and, and I'm going to kind of put myself here on the table. I've faced head on my, my food issues and my gluttony issues and, and all the emotional and physical things that go with that. And that's been difficult. That's been very difficult. Just like a mm-hmm. person who, who goes, breaks an addiction to drugs or alcoholism or whatever, there, these are very difficult things that cause you physical, mental, emotional pain mm. to walk mm. through those. Those are difficult yeah. things, but it's for the long-term good. It's for your long-term good mm-hmm. and it's going to be difficult times. But, you know, if we put our faith in God, we know that we're going to get to the other side. Yes. You know. And so we, we have to be prepared for that, but we also have to look beyond, we have to look beyond the the short term to look towards the long term and say, okay, the pain is worth the gain. Yes. Whatever it is that we're being called to, to, to walk through for, for our, our, you know, for our betterment, Mm -hmm. um, this is where we have faith in God. This is where we put our, this is where we. We, we, we grow in our faith. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. It is. And it sets such a, um, a a strong and firm foundation for, for what he's taking us into, you know, into our next, 
you know, Absolutely. and, and to, you know, I, I go back to the children of Israel and, and how they watched all of the plagues come through and, you know, the frogs were there one day, the next day they were gone, you know, and just, and they're watching, they're watching God do all of these things. And you know what? He's, he is preparing them to trust him further when they get to the edge of the Red Sea and he's preparing them for when they go into the promised land and they see how large the giants are and all this, you know, and he's preparing them to trust him. Mm-hmm. And it's these things that that we're going to walk through and that some of us are walking through to go, look, in the long haul, this is preparing us for the next. And, if you know, we can trust him here because we're going to get to trust him there. And then we're going to get to trust him again and watch him build us into what he's created us and designed us to be originally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's you know, good. We're, we're running out of time, but I just want to say, um, as someone who was told that I had anxiety, and I say that specifically, who's told that I had anxiety, mine was more spiritual than physical. And I know it can be either, but God can heal either. Absolutely. And the way I came out of it was I turned to God and it took a long time. It took a lot of teaching from God. It took a lot of understanding, it took a lot of trial and error, but I got through it. And then I realized that I was using it. It was almost like an addiction because mm-hmm. I could use it. I had an excuse to, when I didn't understand who I was, I had an excuse for why I felt the way I felt. But when God showed me that I am a child of God and put my identity in him, that changed everything. And then I realized that I was told. Remember when God went to Adam and Eve in the garden and God said, who told you you were naked? You're not naked. Who Mm. told you? That's good. Who told you you have anxiety? Who told you you have depression? You're yeah. not that person. You are a child of God and he will get you through it. So, you know, just if you, that person you were talking to happens to watch us, tell them, even if they fast forward all the way to the end, about 32 minutes yeah, to just listen to this. You're right. Because you're, you're exactly we right. Are told, and we believe it. Mm-hmm. We, we do. And, and it, there again, this is another thing too. And, and just a, as far as a, a piece of information that the Lord's been working on us about, as far as some of the new workshops that we're going to be doing through the Fulcrum Center. Um, in March, we're doing one on identity. And, mm-hmm. and Phil, this is a lot of what you're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. And Chad, as far as sharing on who we are to be rebuking, we're to be rebuking the one that Phil's talking about, who said, who told you? Right. And the answer right. is the devil. Yeah. Right. You know, the one who is, and Chad said this earlier, the one who has come to steal, kill, and destroy, to steal our identity and give us a false one. Mm-hmm. That's that's what he's doing. And mm-hmm. so then we buy into that lie, and that becomes who we are. And so we see life through those lenses, and that is wrong because mm-hmm. those are to solely given so that we can be destroyed. And so that he can steal our purpose, steal our identity and, and to kill us so that we don't fulfill the purpose that God's given us and not only fulfill our purpose, but then also to flow into the lives of those around us. But yeah. that's what God wants for us. Yeah, so absolutely. in March, we're going to step into this and, and teach on identity and what that looks, you know, what that is and what that looks like. And, and some of the false identities that we carry now. And then how we're going to move through those and get rid of those, rebuke the enemy, shed those off of us, and then really see God's identity and how he sees us and then be able to grab a hold of those. So there again, that's in 23. Absolutely. It's going to be a good year. It is. This was a good year. You know, I just want to make a final comment. Um, Yeah. I'll let you guys have the last word, but just, you know, before we um, started recording, I had mentioned that I was out today in, in the hustle and bustle, and there were so many people out. And, and I was thinking the same thing, and you said it, Ian, that you know people are excited that this year is like the first year after the pandemic where we can really get out and not be concerned about getting the getting COVID. I mean, I know it's still out there, but it's not what it was. And, and just people are excited, and it was a good year. And I think in a lot of ways, 2022 is a really good year. 
And even though, even if 2023 ends up being a little bit painful, it is going to be a great year, I believe. Mm-hmm. So I just want to encourage everyone to, to step forward and ask God, which, what can your change be Amen. in 2023? And let him guide you in that. Yeah, I totally agree with that. So, it is all good right, stuff. Well, we're out of time, but so let you guys get the last word in and we'll be done for the year. <laughs> I think I spoke enough tonight. Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Have a, have, have a very happy new year. Amen. Yes. Absolutely. May God's blessing just pour out upon each one of you in this new year that's up and coming. And may you allow him, may we all, all of us just allow him to flow in and through us. And may we be in tune to his spirit that lives in us more than we ever have before. And that we understand his voice, that it becomes so familiar to us and, and that we look mm-hmm. for opportunities to obey him and to listen to him and and come against the enemy and the authority that god's given us amen 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 all right everyone thank you for joining in and we will see you next year absolutely (laughs) yeah all right here we come 2023 good night